Hello, beach friends. I invite you to come as you are on a beach walk with me as I take a very, very early beach walk. Now, repeat viewers, thank you. Thank you so much for coming back. If you're new to my channel, well, you just may learn something about seashells or seabirds or even sea life. Today, we are going to do all of the above, but I will tell you there are three seashells that really, really made my heart sing. But not to worry, there was plenty of awesome stuff. If you're ready to see what's out there for us today, let's go to the beach. Well, here we are on Fort Myers Beach and it is lovely, but I know we can't see it because it's dark, but not to worry. I do have my headlamp and this is one of the things I really just kind of wanted to try night shelling. The sun will be coming up shortly, but I did want to creep around the beach for a little while in the dark. This is an angel wing, actually a nice size angel wing, and that will likely clean up pretty good. So off to a pretty good start. Now, I am going to let you in on a little secret. When I find weird things and I think they're dead, I do film them. But it's not dead. That thing's alive. So my mission at this point is to not touch it and get it back in the water because I have absolutely no clue what that critter is. And it, I could be injured. I mean, I can get zapped. Some of these things will zap you. So I scoop my foot underneath the sand and flip the critter over. I'm trying to be as gentle as I can, again, without touching it. And I'm desperately looking for an Atlantic giant cockle or a big pen shell or anything to kind of get this critter into the water. Well, I am rather resourceful. And so my Delicates container does have a lid, but I was relatively unsuccessful on getting it kind of scooped up. I didn't want to just like flip it into the water. So try as I might, the lid didn't work, but that's okay. I managed to get it into the little container piece. Now that is, or this, that critter is a short nose batfish. Did a little research on that batfish. And as we can see, it has highly modified pectoral fins that resemble legs or feet. And it uses that to walk along the seafloor. So hopefully the batfish went on to have a, a good day. Certainly didn't start out that way. And look, I guess I've been kind of messing around. The sun is coming out. This light is still rather low, but it's still kind of pretty. And this is my favorite spot on Fort Myers Beach. These piers here, just kind of like a, like a landmark for me. And we're not going to talk about the barnacles and the oysters. We did that the last time we were here. We're going to keep mosey on down the beach and look for some seashells. But I did stop for just a minute because it was such a pretty morning. I like when the clouds and the reflection on the water, you almost can't distinguish the water from the sky. It's so beautiful. There's a little coquina, it's a bright red color that is likely alive. So that will stay here at the beach so it can do its little filter feeding thing. Those are important for the entire ecosystem, like birds like to eat them and stuff. So we get the shells and the birds get fed as well. Okay, let's check in. It's 63, so not bad at all. And look at that low tide. Oh, it was super low. Now, normally by this time in the beach, I really would have picked up a lot more stuff. A little slow today, a little slow. And I have been worried in the past about that, but not today. It'll work out just fine. We'll find lots of stuff. Look at this live sand dollar with all its moving cilia. So they will... Use that to mow, that's how they move. Believe it or not, they do move. They actually swim too. But we usually find them here on the beach. So it's a live sand dollar. And that's why I like coming to the beach at low tide because it just exposes more where critters may be living. So I get to see more critters and things like this sand dollar. Perfectly safe to collect. Wonderful keyhole urchin. Oh, look. <laughs> you just see the little eyeballs poking out. So that's a Florida fighting conch. And this is a great example of how the shell protects the animal. And that you would, like the top of the shell is not really where the animal comes out. It's like the opposite. 
So this the critter comes out of the bottom of the shell. And it's protected, and I'm just going to leave it alone. Say hi. Okay, that sand dollar's broken, so I'll leave that as well. All right, so it's so a couple critters, a couple sand dollars. What else? Okay, so this... How, so I just think that's really cool. This is a Florida prickly cockle. It's alive. I actually think this is an albino version. And it's just so prickly. So when the animals are alive, the shell condition is really, really good. Just wanted to kind of check that out. I just, I like those shells anyway. So to see the critter alive is kind of neat. Lightning whelk wonderful little light yeah the, it, the light is a little low my camera is struggling a little and that's a lettered olive but not to worry it's getting brighter and brighter oh at least i don't need the headlamp high colorful moon snail you are lovely yep that's for me a really really fun shell to collect do like those colorful moon snails Oh, you cute little crown conch, you. Fantastic little color. So that's a little crown conch. Yeah, I did a little digging. <laughs> I was getting desperate. And there's the morning. So the sun isn't quite up yet. Not quite as spectacular as some of the other sunrises. Still a pretty morning. You definitely will not hear me complaining. Let's see, who else is here? Hmm, a right, couple people. I don't have the place completely to myself, but it is the area is still recovering from the hurricane, which happened well over a year ago, and we will be continuing to recover from that hurricane. It takes a long time. So those bottom floors of those buildings are still under construction, but it'll be nice when it's done. It'll be like brand new. So this is the buffet for the birds here. These are all crossbarred Venus clams. Rather, you know, you they're always here. They're kind of neat, but since it's just, they're always there, it's just not that interesting. You, you just walk out and pick one up. I mean, they're always, always there. I bet the birds are happy to see them though. Oh, that's pretty. Reflection. Very nice. But you know what's even pretty too? That mud. Because the shells like to kind of bury in the mud, especially the crown conchs. But here we have a shark eye which is a member of the moon snail family. That is a living banded tulip. So I'm just going to leave that critter alone. And, you know, I was not the only one who noticed the condition. The shells are kind of lacking this winter. Someone else commented. Not as good as most seasons, I'm surprised. Yeah, and I kind of said, yeah, I know. I've noticed that too. For me, though, I don't mind slowing down. And this Buttercup Lucene, Rose Petal Talent, and Lettered Olive are still going to make me quite happy. Banded to Okay, yeah, some shells in there. Just making sure there's no critters when you're in the water. I always say, be very careful. Banded Tulip. Another Lettered Olive. Fantastic. Okay, an Apple Murex. See how pretty you are. Oh, you have nice little ridges and whatnot. Oh, yes. Very nice looking apple murex. And some, I love that. I didn't know what it was going to be. What's it going to be? So this is a juvenile Florida fighting conch. It was kind of masquerading as a couple other shells as it was half buried. Oh, a spiny jewel box. Yeah, the spikier that I just like... You know, I will pick up pretty much all of the spiny jewel boxes and then just examine. Are you, how spiny are you? Now, this is a live Atlantic giant cockle. Now, this was cool because normally we just, uh, these are the beach bowls. And normally I see them on the beach and they're dead or they just kind of hang out and they have their like tongue hanging out. But it was really neat to see this critter and kind of watch it do its thing because it's a filter feeder. And they actually help maintain the water quality by removing particles and nutrients from the water column. I've never actually had the opportunity to see the Atlantic giant cockle actually do its filter feeding. It's cleaning the water and eating. Oh, that was kind of neat, kind of pretty too, if you ask me. Very cool. Oh, speaking of pretty, this is a Florida fighting conch. Oh, you are awesome. Ooh, this looks fantastic. All right. What else is here? I know, that little white shell. Nope, I was going for the banded tulip. 
So what do we got? We got banded tulip. Oh, I already had a couple lettered olives in my hand. There was so many lettered olives. And I'm still not at the point myself where I can resist them. So I do still kind of collect a lot. Because there's so... And believe me, I leave plenty behind. Me and everybody else who comes here. There's plenty of seashells to go around. So a handful of banded tulips and a couple of lettered olives. Here's the beach bowl. All right, so this one, maybe that critter fed a bird or... I don't know, but look what's behind. Gorgeous. So it's hinged, but that is an Atlantic giant cockle. All right, we got another what? Oh, a shark eye. I thought it was actually going for the other conch. But that is, oh, very lovely. I think it's a false shark eye, but still real pretty color on that tiny little shell. <gasps> yeah, so let's see. Normally, you see this and it's gonna be live and I kind of pull it and, oh! <gasps> It's not alive! Yay! Okay, so this is shell number one that made my heart sing. Because normally shells this big or snails this big are alive, but the only thing that's left behind this time is this shell. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I'm just tickled. So that's a lightning whelk. Not easy to find them that size. Awesome, gorgeous, gorgeous lightning whelk. Woohoo! Thank you, low tide. All right, here we have a Florida cone. Cones are cool. Very pointy Florida cone. And another lettered olive. Really, really. I just want to point out they're all really shiny and pointy. Now, this is another Florida prickly cockle. We had picked one up, and I was marveling at all its prickliness. The other one I thought was albino. This one I believe is not. And again, I just am fascinated. Oh, you are so awesome. So those live critters are gonna have just really, really cool shells. And I drop that off and look what I spy. I see five little legs. Oh, there's a couple of them. So this is a brittle star. They are distantly related to our sea stars or the starfish that we see down here. Now, I've only ever seen live ones, again, here at Fort Myers Beach. They have the ability to see with their legs. They normally kind of crawl into crevices and things, but they have light receptors. And that's what I'm kind of testing. Like, ooh, can you see that I'm you know, giving you a shadow? Oh, I just think they're so cool. So their, their locomotion, kind of dragging its little body along. Oh, that's so cool. So that is a smooth, brittle star. Yeah, super neat, super neat critter. I'm kind of checking out things. What else is going on here? All right, so we have, yeah, this is a live apple murex. And it's, I see this a lot. It's on an empty shell. Now, normally that critter would be attached to a shell trying to eat the contents. But I find the apple murex on empty shells all the time. I don't know what they're doing. Just loving this guy pulling itself along. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. I haven't seen a brittle star in a really long time. So I'm gonna be careful where I'm walking. There might be other little critters out there. All right, what do I see here? A splash of color. Oh, it's a Florida fighting conch. Ooh, a little purple on the inside. That's a kind of a cool one. Nice looking fighting conch. Mm. Here's another one of those um, Florida prickly cockles that looks freshly expired. So it is super prickly. And then the in uh -huh. and then the bonus interior colors, beautiful sherbet colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the Florida prickly cockle. That's piece of a lightning whelk. You never know. Is it going to be alive? It's empty. Woo! <laughs> And oh, the color. <gasps> oh, lightning whelk, you are beautiful and empty. Another one. That first one I found a little bit bigger. This one still, color is stunning. Awesome lightning whelk. Now this is also a lightning whelk, but it's very big and I suspect it's probably alive. So I do want to just peek. I hate disturbing them. Yeah, I do see an operculum in there. 
But again, that would be very silly to leave that big empty shell on the beach. So I try to be as gentle as I can when I check to see if it's a critter or if it's a shell. Nope, that, not a keeper. And then this is normally how it goes. I do lots of walking, picking up all sorts of different stuff. And then I kind of pick and choose once I get home what I'm gonna share with y'all. Oh, look, two more brittle stars. See it kind of hugging that? ponderous arc and this other one so I don't know the first one that we were talking about is I believe a smooth brittle star that other one was it maybe a blood brittle star I don't know and look another apple murex it's drilling on an empty shell or it's hanging out maybe it's just hanging out on an empty shell I don't know who's to say that it's actually trying to eat right another brittle star anybody else what's this a little chestnut turban but underneath is iridescent that nacre on the chestnut turbans oh that's kind of pretty even though it's really beat up it's rather pretty and since I'm here I might as well grab this banded tulip too the banded tulip and a chestnut turban okay another Florida flight and conch but god look at the cut the pattern the color oh it's so pretty Oh, that is such a pretty shell. I actually had a necklace made of one of the prettier shells, just about that size. I do love the, the Florida fighting conks. And then buried in here, oh, an alphabet cone was hanging out with the Atlantic giant cockles. That's a nice looking alphabet cone. I don't find the orange ones all that often. For whatever reason, I tend to find those darker ones. More lettered olives, yay. Oh, and I do see another one. Nope, not albino. I'm telling you, the water sometimes acts like a beauty filter. Like the shells look gorgeous underwater. And you pick them up and, yeah, they're just not what you were expecting. So I'll leave that there. Let's see what else we got. Oh, well, hi there. This is a cantharis. It is a tinted cantharis. I... Yeah, for me, that's just such an interesting shell because I used to just not like them at all, and now I just do. I don't know how that happens. Why does that happen? All right, piece of a lightning well. Oh, no. That's a whole lightning well as well. Oh, pretty. Nice color. Nice little lightning well. You'll come with us, too. Oh, look at this one. Look how different. So these are the things in my head. Wow, that other one was so brown. This one is so orange or like golden. And yeah, they just, that's the way they are. It's genetics, just the way it is. Orange shells produce more orange shells. The brown ones produce more brown ones. Beautiful. Okay, that, now this one I know is alive. I see the trail behind it. So I see the lightning whelk shell. I also actually see a little bit of the animal, which will be black, it comes out of the tip of the shell. So I'm just gonna leave that one alone. But what do we got here? A crown conch, which we know is not a true conch. We have talked about that. This is another shell. I really enjoy the different varieties of them. Sometimes they're spiky. They've got strong colors. What do we, oh. Oh, look at you. Oh, you're so spiky. Oh, you even have a second. All right, you can go with somebody else. Oh my God, you're beautiful. Look at that second row of spikes. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is shell number two that made my heart sing. I just thought that was spectacular. The crowned conch. All right, here's another little one. Grant, I, yeah, not quite as spectacular, still really cool. Almost looks like it has like a double row of spikes on top. Let's make sure there's no critters in there. Nice and empty. Yes, and once I feel confident there's nobody home, yep, we'll put that little crown conk in the shell bag. Awesome, woo -hoo -hoo. <gasps> No way. So it's a knuckle of a horse conk. Love seeing the knuckle and usually just like a piece will come off. <gasps> oh, cool. Oh, all right. It's not, oh. Oh, that's awesome. It's awesome. I bet you it's gonna clean up just fine. And you know how I feel about that. We're gonna take a look at that shell.
at the end of the video. We'll see how well that little horse conch cleaned up. Okay, so I'm still heading south at this point. I can see the beach is a little flat. Like, I don't see a lot of chunks sitting on the beach. No, that's all right. That's why I'm kind of sticking to the water, hoping that maybe there were some things out there that didn't make their way up onto the beach. One of my favorite parts of the island. Oh, looky here. A souvenir for me. Another sand dollar. Delightful. Yep, those are urchins. We got to see a live one earlier. Now we have another one to collect. Fabulous. Oh, another little shark eye. A little moon snail, yeah. Complete with a snacking hole. So that's what that little hole is. Another animal drilled a hole into that shell. <gasps> is it, oh, I was gonna say, is it zigzaggy? Is it glorious? Yeah, I do think that would qualify. I'm still a little upset about that zigzaggy one I left on Key Wade and it was alive. Oh, oh, but I think, yeah, between that one and this orange one, I think I'm gonna be okay. Oh, they're so pretty. Love those fighting conks. What about you? Oh, you poor thing. Well, you're a crown conk and you're awesome, but you're not quite as awesome as the other one I picked up. You're still really great, poor thing. If I had picked you up before, I might have gone on and on. You're still great. You're still coming home with me. But that other one is pretty glorious. Spiny jewel box. Oh, I do love a good spiny, spiny jewel box. Very nice. And the rose petal talon. Those, to be fair, those are so easy because it's about that big and it's pink find one of those you got a rose petal talon Ooh, actually it could also be a pink coquina so i might have spoken too quickly that is a little nasa tiny they do not get much bigger than that so they're tiny little shells but they're actually quite intricate and i don't slow down so sometimes when there's not big fat chunky things on the beach i don't mind slowing down and taking a look at things like this gulf oyster drill cute little thing some bubbles. Now, I will tell you there are tons of fly speck seraphs here. Like this. Is this a fly speck? It is. And this one happens to have some coloring on it. So the shells that look like this in the shot, they're fly speck seraphs. I actually went back to just make sure I didn't leave any uh, wental traps. Now, I believe that, oh, that could be one of either two things. That's either a Texas talon or that is a white rose petal talon. I know, the rose petal talons come in white too. Just one of those things that make the shells so much fun. That is an Eastern white slipper snail. You can tell it's a slipper snail because it kind of has that little ledge on the back. Those I usually find on the inside of like horse conks and lightning whelks. Here's another slipper, another little slipper shell. Again, very easy to identify with that little ledge in the back there. And there's a couple different ones. You're common, you're spiny, you're spotted. So there are a couple different slipper snails. Oh, well, that's just lovely. I'm sad it's not green. That hurricane really just kind of wiped out the mangroves and they're still kind of struggling to get any of those uh, trees growing back on the beach again. In time, in due time. A lace murex. Now we haven't seen one of those today. Oh, it's nice and pointy, a little bit of color on it and it's empty, Woohoo! So we have a lace murex. Oh, let's see, there's a spotted slipper snail with the ledge. Yep, kind of neat. Another one of those slipper snails. And a yellow prickly cockle, not nearly as impressive or prickly as the Florida prickly cockle we had picked up earlier. And now I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen a live yellow prickly cockle. I don't know that I have, I'll be on the hunt for that. So I'm not alone. There's a couple other people here at the beach going for their morning walks. And the people with the bags, they're doing the same thing I am, doing some beach combing. <gasps> oh, goodness. This is only like the second or third speckled telon I've ever had the opportunity to come in contact with. Oh, it's such a cool shell. So that's a speckled talon. And... That is shell number three. 
that really just made my heart sing. Oh, that was a cool shell. This is a broad ribbed cardita. Not, I'm sorry, just not quite as spectacular as that speckled talon and an Atlant, no, a white Atlantic simile. Yeah, why, why are you called white? I don't know, you're not even a white shell. Who, who makes these names up? I, I, I need to write them a letter. And while I contemplate what I might say to them, I'm gonna be quiet and let you enjoy some beach time. A purplish tagalus. Now this one is not brown. Normally they have got the brown periostracum on them. They'd be kind of neat to see that critter live. So that is a purplish tagalus. What did I spy? Oh, another crown conch. Let's see, it's a little muddy. Oh dear. Well, it's very, very pitted. And that's what happens when it comes into contact with things like boring sponges. It will dissolve the substrate that it comes in contact with. Well, you're just adorable, common nutmeg. Oh, you're awesome. Yep. You know what? It looks like a giant NASA. That's cool. I do like a good nutmeg. I love critter encounters too. So here we have bottlenose dolphin getting its breakfast. Hello, creature. Have a good day. Oh, garbage. Yeah, I do pick up any of the garbage that I can physically carry. So there's a car tire. No, there's nothing I can do about that. But any of the smaller stuff, and this kind of reminded me of the hurricane. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff that I was picking up after the hurricane. So we're going to get that off the beach as well. A channeled duck clam. All right, we did not see one of those today yeah, they're very 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 thin the channeled duck clam oh you are glorious so that is a very zigzaggy florida fighting conch oh it's so pretty yeah very common and that yep that's just fine that'll make me super duper happy now, finally, I can tell you that this is a constricted Marcoma. Um, I was struggling with this shell for a little while. I know it is not a Tampatellan. It is a constricted Marcoma. And here we have a fallen angel wing. If you don't like that name, then fine. Go with Atlantic Mud Pittic because it has both. One shell, two names, kind of neat. Okay, we haven't picked up one of these today. Here is a little kitten paw. It happens to be hinged. Excellent. I'm glad it's kind of open. Sometimes they'll be closed and then I leave them here at the beach if I can't open them. But that is a little Atlantic kitten paw. What a day. So it's warmed up to a balmy 66, honestly, which is fine. I know I'm normally whining about the cold, but I've, I've gotten used to it, especially if I'm walking around in the water in February. So yeah, it's not that cold. And I'm just at this point really just reveling. I can't believe I got to see all those brittle stars. I got that big lightning whelk, that awesome crown conch, the speckled talon. Yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, well, I can't believe one person can have so much fun. And we're not done yet. This is an American oyster catcher digging for some breakfast. So it's get, gonna get a shell. And I'm curious, does it open? Yeah, I think at this point it's opened the shell. All right, it's gonna move its breakfast and breakfast is served it's interesting if you just stop i stop to watch the critters every now and then not too much i'm usually well you know i'm usually walking around looking for seashells and whatnot but sometimes so these american oyster catchers happen to be one of the birds i actually skimmers are my favorite but these are probably my second favorite they're just a little goofy looking so that just endears them to me american oyster catchers there's actually a third one here i'll zoom out in a sec here we go, there's a third one. So they're just having their breakfast. Thanks for entertaining me for a few minutes, little birds. Oh, we've got a couple more up here. Let's see what we got here. Turns, lots of turns, royal turns, sandwich turns, 
more oyster catchers, probably a gull or two in there. Oh, what was the other turn? Oh, there was another one. I was going through the book. Caspian. I don't think any of those are Caspian turns. There's American Oyster Catcher. And the ready turn stones, I like those too. Oh yeah, we get shells, critters, birds. Oh, what a morning. Pointed Venus Clam. Haven't picked up one of those either today. So that's kind of neat. Another fun little shell you might find down here. And then if you grab them with the holes in them, yep. We like to decorate our trees down here all year long. I kind of talked about the mangroves earlier, but yeah, this is all we got. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit of dead stuff pushed back from the beach. That's okay. We'll take what we can get. Like this little Florida horse conch. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, I'm making sure it's empty. Hermit crabs love the horse conchs. So do I. You have great taste, hermit crabs. So that's a fun little shell. Here it is flat. Yeah, you probably could find a little something something if you were kind of closer to the water. But at this point, I'm getting ready. I know that I'm leaving the beach at this point, And I'm just so grateful. And I had so much fun. So garbage. So I did take a little bit of garbage off the beach. 4.95 ounces, which means in total I've removed a little over 44 pounds of garbage off the beach. Every little bit counts. That's kind of the way I look at it. Spiny jewel boxes, got a bunch of those today. Some of those shark eyes. We have some spotted, or well, we have some slipper snail, some docenias, the Florida prickly cockles, the yellow prickly cockle, some tinies, the Atlantic giant cockles. Yeah, I did pick up a ton of glossy pointy lettered olives. They were awesome. We have some Gulf oyster drills, some augers, some bubbles, a little banded to a bunch of banded tulips there. One chestnut turban, a Florida cone, broad rib cardita, one lace murex, one alphabet cone with we'll slide over to the lightning whelk. So there was a couple of those. We have a buttercup leucine kitten paw. I did get a couple of those calico clams. I do like those. Some sunray venus clams, the angel wings, a couple of sand dollars. So there were a few apple, a few, a few apple muric shells. That pittock, the nasa, the pointed clam, the purplish tiglis. There was a dusty cone in there. Oh, a lot of those pretty fighting cocks, the zigzaggy ones. So one Florida horse conch. Well, actually there was two because there's that bigger one. Then my favorites, the one that made my heart sing, that big lightning whelk, that spiky crown, that speckled talon. Not necessarily rare, but for me, I thought it was glorious because I rarely, rarely find them. So I can't even begin to tell you how much fun I had. It was awesome. So let's take a look at that crusty horse conch. So there was a lot of mud kind of stuck in there. And, you know, overall, like, it was a good enough size and in condition. I thought, yeah, it's totally worth it. And so I soaked it in bleach. It's kind of my go-to. Ta-da! Now, the mud was kind of covering up. There's a little bit of a hole in the front. Yeah, the aperture's broken. There's a little bit of a hole. Like, the shell, it's not perfect, but still a nice size. Uh, it's fine. I'm totally keeping it. It was really fun. Patreons, thank you so much for even considering to support me. I really, really appreciate it more than I can say. There's just not words to kind of wrap around the fact that I am so grateful and so appreciative for you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Next week, I think we're going to go to Sanibel and find it a little bit by the seat of my pants, but not to worry. I'm going to bring you a great video. So until then, I hope you have yourself a great week and I will see you again next Sunday.